Solo queuing sucks. I get it. I've been through it myself. It really does feel like your teammates are trying as hard as possible to gift the enemies a free win. And yet you keep doing it for some reason. I'm guilty of it too. You know, either your friends are all offline or you don't have any friends. Not me though. I have a lot of friends and they always want to play with me. Anyways, no matter what circumstance you're in, you have no one to queue with and you want to engage in self-destructive behavior. I mean, playing ranked. So, I have five tips for you that can make solo queuing just a little bit less painful. Let's just cover some basics before we get into this video where I share tips that help me hit high elo with or without a stack. This is not going to be a video where I tell you, just play with a stack. Clearly, you are here because you don't have a stack. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend to give you some sage-like advice telling you to go find a stack. I get it, it's hard, it sucks. I myself haven't had a consistent five stack to play with for probably over a year at this point. And that's okay, I still hit diamond. You can hit any rank you want with any combination of people. It's all about how you approach the situation you're given. Solo queuing is an art and there is no one right way to do it, but I think that these tips will be able to help you. And because of that, I don't want to make this video one of those cheesy, oh, just find someone to play with. It'll make it easier. No, we're here to solo queue and get better at it. Solo queue is not supposed to be easy. No one said it would be easy. You're playing a team game. You're probably playing as a five stack and you're alone. You probably don't have good communication. You're not going to be getting good call outs and you have no one to rely on but yourself. You don't know what strats your teammates are going to be running. If it's a four stack, they're probably gonna be toxic and yelling at you anyways. So no one should go into solo queuing thinking it's going to be easy. But that doesn't mean it has to be harder than necessary. Sure, there are going to be disadvantages and downsides, but that doesn't make it impossible. Playing with randoms will never maximize your chances of winning a game, but it doesn't mean you're gonna lose every game either. Siege is a super unique game when it comes to multiplayer competitive titles. In CS style games, there's an economy where the winning team can steamroll the enemies with their wallets. In League of Legends, you get objectively better stats when you're ahead, making it easier to win fights in the future. Even Overwatch gives you more pressure on the enemies by forcing them to secure enough overtime. Siege has none of that. In Siege, every round is pretty much a fresh start, and it only takes one player to make a difference that can change the outcome of the entire game. Let's get into my five tips for solo queuing ranked more effectively. If you find any of these helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. Number one, communicate. You have a microphone. If you don't have a microphone, go to Target and buy one for like $5. There is no excuse to not have a microphone. The Siege community is very inclusive and they won't make fun of you unless you have a lisp or a stutter or a high-pitched voice, or if you have an accent, or if you're female, or a minority, or young, or any group for that matter. Yeah, this community sucks. It's really bad. It's a dumpster fire. But you are playing the game, so that is something you will unfortunately have to deal with. You definitely don't want to be making small talk, and you don't have to be friendly with these people, but just give a good call out. If everyone else is solo or duo queued, they'll probably be receptive to you giving call outs and they'll probably join in. People always respond best to simple, solid call outs. Just be accurate, say what you need to say, and be over with it. You don't need to get into telling them where to plant, where to peek, push, reload. Don't tell them that stuff. They know and if you tell them, you're going to insult their egos and you are going to get flamed. The second you start or even appear like you might be backseating, people are going to get super toxic. They're going to flame you and it is going to be not a fun time at all. As hard as it might be, it is best to just give the call out and let them do what they will with it. If it is a three or four stack, chances are they already have comms in Discord, so don't feel like you need to be giving out active calls while you're dead on cams. They'll probably already have someone doing that and it'll just clutter up their comms. You can make callouts, but just try to keep it brief and concise. Even if they might already have calls, 
they won't be insulted if you're giving out good call and making that effort. Just always remember that you can only expect to get out what you put in, so don't go into the game with the mindset that no one's going to give call-outs, so you're not either. That's really just not a constructive way to play the game, and it's always better to make that effort. This also goes for site setups. If you're not 100% sure what the setup is going to look like, you can ask or just leave it to them to reinforce. It's way better to have a strat that four-fifths of your team understands fully and you're slightly confused on than to have a strat that's messed up that nobody knows how to play. Reinforcing random walls because you think it's a bad strat is probably not a good idea unless it's just blatant trolling, and even then you're probably gonna get team killed anyways, so it's better to just communicate or just leave it alone. Tip number two is understanding defaults. Defaults are the established way to attack or defend a site. These are meta in the sense that they've been tried and tested and this is the general way that it's understood that you should approach a site. You need to make an effort to know and understand all of these as best as you can. If your teammates aren't running their own weird strats, then running defaults is never a bad thing. You should know what walls go where, where common rotates are made, and depending on what operator you play, where your utility goes. Every site more or less has about six reinforcements that are considered default and aren't really bad in any sort of configuration. These are most of the time external walls or walls between the bomb site and high traffic areas. Good examples of this would be like on CCTV cache on Clubhouse. Common walls to reinforce would be those outside CC walls the con cache wall and the four garage walls those are very commonly accepted and if you reinforce those nobody will get mad at you defaults will vary a bit from region to region and from rank to rank so just try your best to learn what's going on in your own games you can adapt it you can learn from it see what your teammates are doing see what your enemies are doing and then sort of pick up what's going on and why they're doing that most of these default strats do trickle down or have trickled down from pro or other high level play and there's a reason these strats work. There aren't any glaring holes in them and they're solid strats that are simple enough to run in ranked. If someone on your team doesn't understand the default, you can try to explain it to them or just let them do their own thing. It is again not worth TKing or getting TK'd over if one wall gets misplaced. If your ego is that hurt being challenged over which wall goes where, then you need more help than this video can give you. Tip 3, and I cannot stress this one enough, stop maiming operators. As nice as it would be to minimize your variables by keeping your gun, gadget, and loadout the same, there's no one operator that's 100% right for every situation. And if you're a new player, it can be really overwhelming to have this many operators in front of you, and it's easy to fall into the trap of comfort by picking the same operator over and over again. But in reality, you're harming your own chances of winning the game and even your growth as a player. No one should ever be only playing one operator, and that's for a number of reasons. That operator can get banned, it might be the wrong pick for the map or the site you're on, and there just might be a hole in your team comp that needs to be filled. Sticking to your main is a selfish way of ensuring that you're never going to learn more, and if I'm being honest, if you have a main, they're probably not right for most sites. I've seen way too many fuse mains picking fuse on second floor attacks, where there's really nothing for them to fuse but a couple windows, and thermite mains refusing to switch off to a different hard breach when they need to open hatches. At the very least, you should be able to play at least one operator in every role, whether that be flank watch, or hard breach, or frag, or flex support. It's okay to be just proficient at one entire group of characters, so just all the hard breachers in general. But again, you're sort of pigeonholing yourself into one role, one way of thinking, one way of playing the game, and that's not going to help you become a better player in the long run. So if you really want to be successful as a solo player, you have to be able to recognize holes in team comps, be willing to fill them, and then also be proficient enough with that operator so that you're not harming your team. You have to be ready to be uncomfortable if you want to win games. And that means not maining an operator. Being good at Siege is more than being good at an operator. Siege is a dynamic game, and it requires you to have a wide variety of skills and be adaptable. Being able to pick more than one operator is the first step to being more adaptable. Once you reach a certain level of mastery within an operator, you start to learn counters and synergies better than you ever could just playing the same operator over and over again. You begin to learn what works against certain operators, 
how you can then counter that when you're playing as that operator and so on and so forth. I'm sure there's a Sun Tzu quote about that somewhere. And that actually brings me to my fourth tip. Recognize patterns. If you're solo queuing, you can't always expect your teammates to have solid, well thought out strats that they're going to be following properly and actually holding. So winning rounds is going to really depend on you being able to adjust to your teammates and your enemies. You can't control what your teammates are doing, but you can focus on what the enemies are doing and how to pick that apart. Ranked having three round halves is actually really good for this point, and it makes it way more important than it used to be, because you now have three rounds for your enemies to become predictable and to fall into certain patterns and bad habits that they definitely do have. People, and especially players in lower ranks, love patterns. Sure, sometimes you'll find some psycho who doesn't make any sense and is totally unpredictable, but that's one in a hundred. Most of the time, there will be someone who gets lazy or skips steps or does the same thing over and over again. And if you can find that, you can exploit that and you can give yourself a big advantage for the round. If there's an Ash player that likes to break in a window, run up the stairs and then rush right into sight, killing three people, you can ride around by that window because chances are she does that every single round. And just like that, by recognizing a pattern one round and applying it to the next round, you're up 5v4 and you're not getting rushed. Other patterns to be looking out for are holes in defense that no one's watching, spawn peaks, and even roaming patterns. You can save yourself a lot of time if you recognize that five people are hunkered down in sight because then you don't have to spend the next two minutes roam clearing the map that's already clear. And on the other hand, if you know that four of them love to roam, you can just go directly to site and fight the one guy on site and plant. It's very rare at any level of play that people are going to completely change their playstyles and their habits in the span of one round. So you can abuse that. It can even be little things like gadget placement, where enemies like to spawn, where they like to try for a plant, what walls they like to open. All of these things you should be keeping in mind and compartmentalizing and use them later on in the game. This extends into overtime and overtime match point. Site lock is reset, so that means that defenders are probably going to the site where they won the easiest. So you can prepare for that, you can remember what patterns they had and abuse it that way. Basically, as a solo player, you cannot guarantee a win at a macro level. You can't coordinate a 5-man push, refrags, a crazy strat, or any of that. So you have to focus on what you can do at the micro level. My final tip is to get rid of expectations. While this one is something that can be applied even in a 5 stack, it is incredibly valuable as a solo player. When you solo, you have to trust yourself and only yourself. You have to be confident enough to be able to 1v5 every single round if necessary. Anything that your teammates do beyond that is a pleasant surprise. At the same time, if you think your teammates are going to be bad, they're going to be as bad as you've ever had. If you think you're going to play bad, you'll be 0-9 before you even know it. It is ridiculous how much your mentality going into a game will affect the outcome of that game. If you're tilted before you even get into a game, do you really think it's going to become fun halfway through? Keeping a positive mindset and at the same time having no expectations for anybody but yourself is the healthiest way to go into solo queuing. On top of this, and this is something that people don't really talk about a lot, it's almost more important to remove the expectations you have of your enemies. If possible, I would recommend not running any stat tracking apps. I would love to say just don't run stat tracking apps, but they are necessary for spotting out cheaters so you can cancel the games that have cheaters in them. But outside of spotting cheaters, stat trackers do nothing but make you play worse. There's really only two outcomes to looking at the stat tracker. Either you see the enemies are significantly worse than you, and you begin to troll and play like an idiot because of it, thinking it's a free win. Or you see players that have a bigger number than yours and all of a sudden they're scary, you're losing gunfights and you're losing confidence. Neither of these are good outcomes and it's better to just not even look at the scoreboard if possible. Again, I know cheaters happen and you can't win every game, but if you can remove all expectations for everybody but yourself, you can become an infinitely better and more confident player. Solo queuing is never going to be a guaranteed win. It's never even going to be a likely win. Every game is going to be a struggle in some way. 
and there are hundreds of factors that are totally out of your control and that's okay there are some games that are just going to be a loss no one ever has a 100 percent win rate but these are five tips that i think will help you to maximize your win rate as a solo player solo queue is easily the most frustrating way to play a siege but it's also the most rewarding it's the ultimate way to practice holding yourself accountable and really is one of the best ways to improve as an individual player i really do hope these tips can make your ranked experience a little bit less painful if you guys have any other tips that you find helpful while solo queuing please leave them in the comments down below Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.